There are many native plants that are so common that some think of them simply as weeds and their ecological importance is overlooked or totally ignored. A prime example of a plant in this category is American pokeweed, Phytolacca americana, a common plant across much of the eastern United States except for the extreme northernmost regions. Pokeweed is an impressive perennial plant and equally impressive to its size and striking coloration is its importance to pollinators as a host plant and most importantly to birds. It is also valuable in soil remediation when heavy metal contamination is a concern, but by far pokeweed is best known to most people for its cultural use as food and in herbal medicine preparations, which we will get to in a bit. First, let's look at how to identify pokeweed in the field and learn a bit about its important role in the ecosystem. Pokeweed is a pioneer species and it thrives on disturbance. It can be found growing anywhere the ground has been disturbed by plowing, excavation with heavy equipment, mowing that has scuffed the area, a logging operation, you get the idea. If the existing plant community has been altered in any way that allows sunlight to the ground, and especially if there has been some ground disturbance, pokeweed will flourish. Pokeweed is quite large for a perennial forb and can be from four to 10 feet tall with a three to five foot spread. It has a shrub-like growth form and fills many of the same roles shrubs do in the ecosystem. It is excellent umbrella cover, the type of cover that is open underneath and thick above, like an umbrella, for ground feeding birds like the northern bobwhite, rufous sided towhee, and many sparrow species, along with small mammals and reptiles like the box turtle. As an herbaceous perennial, pokeweed will die back in the fall and re sprout from the root crown in the spring. Its large size and showy coloration spring through fall, eye catching fruit clusters, and interesting growth form made it a popular garden plant in Europe although it was first introduced into Europe for a far different reason that we will get to in a bit. When it comes to soil for pokeweed, it will grow just about anywhere if the soil is reasonably moist and well-drained. It does not like overly wet soils or overly dry soils, although it can survive slight drought once well-established, but will wilt and show some stress from it. Part of the reason it is somewhat drought tolerant is the large taproot it produces, which may go as deep as 18 inches on older plants. The plant regrows each year from sprouts on the buds on the upper three inches of the root. So if you ever have to remove a pokeweed, you only have to remove the top few inches of root to ensure that it doesn't grow back, which is way better than digging an 18 inch deep hole or killing your back trying to pry that huge root out of the ground. While we are talking about soil, I want to mention that pokeweed has been shown to remove heavy metals from contaminated soil without any obvious ill effects to the plant. It has been found to be especially good at sequestering cadmium, which is very nasty stuff. Unlike heavy metal music, which is awesome. If you're a metalhead, let us know down in the comments what your favorite band or bands are. I know it's hard to just pick one. If you're not a metalhead, then tell us what kind of music you do like to jam to or drop a butterfly emoji instead. Like many pioneer species, pokeweed thrives in full sunlight and also does well in partial shade. When growing in a location that meets its light and soil requirements, pokeweed is about as maintenance free as a plant can get. If it gets enough light and water, poke will come back year after year for a very long time. Pokeweed has simple, elliptically shaped leaves that are tapered on both ends. What poke lacks in interest when it comes to leaf shape, it makes up for in leaf size and the leaves average six to 10 inches long and three to seven inches wide. The leaf edge or margin is smooth and untoothed. Both leaf surfaces are smooth and the color can range from dark green to yellowish green, depending on the growing conditions. The petiole or leaf stalk is noticeably thin for such a large leaf and short from one half to one inch long. The leaves have an alternate arrangement on the stem and have an acrid, unpleasant smell when crushed. Fall color is in shades of red, purple, and yellow. The leaves are important to many species of moth caterpillars, most notably the black and orange, spiky, totally metal looking caterpillars of the equally awesome looking giant leopard moth. A host of other insects feed on pokeweed leaves, and it is rare to find a poke plant without some insect munching on it. Most mammals avoid browsing on pokeweed because it is toxic, but white-tailed deer find it delicious, and it is a moderate to highly selected browse species for them. Also surprisingly, humans find the newly emerged shoots fine table fare when properly prepared. I cannot emphasize properly prepared enough. We'll dive into the possible hazards with handling and eating poke here in a bit. 
Keeping all these plant traits straight can be tough, and a good guide can be a big help when you are out in the field checking out plants. A handy guide that will not only help you ID the forbs, grasses, ferns, vines, and shrubs you come across, but also points out their wildlife uses is Forest Plants of the Southeast and their wildlife uses by Miller & Miller. This handy guide is sectioned by plant type, and although it isn't a complete guide to every plant out there, it does contain those that you are most likely to encounter. It makes a great addition to any habitat manager's library, and I'm sure you will love it as much as I do. I will put a link to it in the description. This is an affiliate link, which simply means we get a small commission if you buy the book. No extra charge to you, simply we get a small commission from the seller, which helps support the channel. The stems of the pokeweed plants can be quite stout, up to two inches in diameter, which makes sense for such a large plant. They are smooth and somewhat glossy and can vary in color from green on younger plants to pinkish and a brilliant fuchsia or red on mature plants. A stem split lengthwise will reveal a chambered hollow pith. These hollow stems are used by some stem nesting native bee species, so it is a good idea to leave pokes standing in the fall after it dies back for the year. If you must cut it back a little bit in the fall, cut it so there are 12 to 18 inch stubs left standing. This will still give these bees a place to nest. The crushed stems have a disagreeable odor, just like the crushed leaves do. Love learning about our native plants that are ecological powerhouses and often overlooked? Then help make them better known by telling YouTube to promote this video by going and pollinating that like button. Pokeweed has a long bloom period and the blooms can be found on the plants anytime from June through September with some variants depending on location. The individual flowers are small, around a quarter of an inch across with five white petal-like sepals in a greenish center. The flowers form in cylindrical racemes that are around an inch in diameter and from three to six inches in length. The racemes are mostly at the tips of the shoots and often curve at the end. The stalks of the racemes and the flowers go through a color change as they mature. They start off white, then turn a pinkish color, then turn fuchsia or red as they mature. The small flowers attract mainly native helictid bees and various species of flies, but are also visited by some wasp species and smaller butterflies and moths. The flowers are soon followed by squat round fruits that are green at first, turn pink to purple as they start to ripen, and then finally turn a shiny black when fully ripe. All three stages of ripeness can often be seen in the same raceme. The fruits are present from June to November depending on location. Ripe berries are loaded with purple juice that will stain whatever it touches. Fun fact! This juice was used as a commercial dye at one time and even as a food coloring, often being used to color wine. The use of poke as a dye agent was the reason poke was originally introduced into Europe. In addition to juice, the berries each contain 10 small, flattened lens-shaped seeds. Pokeweed produces a ton of fruit, as much as many woody shrubs, and the juice and seed-filled berries are sought out by a huge assortment of songbirds like mockingbirds, several species of sparrows, and that backyard favorite, the northern cardinal. Pokeweed spreads by seed, and the birds really help it spread, as most of the seeds go right through the songbirds that eat them. This can lead to pokeweed being thick along power lines and fences where birds like to perch and can result in pokeweed growing in some really weird places. In addition, game birds like the northern bobwhite and mourning doves highly favor poke seeds. Mammals also feast on the fruits and they are eaten by raccoons, foxes, and the Virginia opossum. Pokeweed is packed with phytochemicals, many of them toxic. I'm not gonna dive too deeply into the phytochemistry of pokeweed because it would take a long video to cover it all in depth, but here are the highlights. All parts of the plant contain a complex brew of saponins, alkaloids, oxalates, and lectins, with the highest concentration in the roots, seeds, unripe fruits, and the older leaves. While birds and some mammals seem to be able to eat pokeweed leaves, fruits, and seeds with zero adverse effects, this is not the case for humans. Ingesting poke can lead to severe digestive distress, vomiting, and intense diarrhea, which can lead to dehydration. This is on the good end of things. At the other end of the spectrum, it can cause muscle weakness, convulsions, seizures, problems breathing, rapid pulse, unconsciousness, and at the worst, there have been deaths attributed to pokeweed poisoning, although this is extremely rare. Pokeweed has been used traditionally as an herbal remedy for all sorts of ailments, and the newly emerged early spring leaves, which are the least toxic part of the plant are gathered to cook as pot herbs known as poke salad across the south. 
However, these uses are not without the risk of pokeweed poisoning. I urge extreme caution to anyone who plans on ingesting pokeweed in any shape or form. Sensitivity to poke varies greatly among people, so even properly prepared poke may still make some individuals ill. Personally, I just don't see the risk being worth it. Accidental poisoning from eating fresh leaves is unlikely, although it has happened, because they taste horrible. But the ripe fruits have a sweetish taste and could accidentally be consumed by unknowing adults and children. I found a study that looked at 1,669 cases of pokeweed poisoning in Kentucky between 2000 and 2019. Ingesting the berries and the uncooked leaves were the cause of most of these poisonings, and children were by far the most common patient in these occurrences. Although that seems like a really high number of pokeweed poisonings in that 19-year period, there were no fatalities recorded. Some people also report pokeweed causing a rash from handling it, and several of the phytochemicals can enter the body through cuts and abrasions and may have systemic effects. I don't really worry about touching it while I'm out and about. The only time I really worry about it is if I have to pull it or if I have to hack a trail through it when I'm out doing maintenance work. Then I do wear some nitrile gloves, which I'll put a link to some good ones in the description. Like many of the phytochemicals found in our native plants, some of the compounds in pokeweed have been shown to have pharmacological properties and are being researched for possible medical use. Pokeweed is one of those unsung heroes when it comes to providing for pollinators and wildlife. It does a little bit of everything. Provides blooms for pollinators, is a host plant for moths, feeds a variety of songbirds, game birds, and mammals, is great umbrella cover for birds and critters, and even provides nesting sites for some of our native bees. On top of all that, it is just a dang impressive plant. If you like the look of pokeweed's white flowers and the ripe pokeweed fruits, but need or want a woody shrub instead, then the common elderberry might be just what you are looking for. And you can learn all about it in this video, and be sure to get out and enjoy nature in your backyard.